This is VOA News via remote. I'm Marissa Melton. U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris endorsed calls Thursday from world leaders for an international war crimes investigation into Russia's invasion of Ukraine and its bombing of civilians, including children and pregnant women at a maternity hospital. Harris made the remarks before meeting in Warsaw with Polish President Andrzej Duda in a show of U.S. support for NATO's allies in Eastern Europe. Her appeal came one day after a Russian airstrike on a maternity hospital in the Ukrainian city of Mariupol killed at least three people, including a child, according to Ukrainian officials. Harris announced in a statement that $53 million in new U.S. humanitarian aid will be given to support innocent civilians affected by Russia's unjustified invasion of Ukraine. In her words, nearly two weeks ago, the United States donated about $54 million in aid for medical supplies, food, thermal blankets, and other essential humanitarian aid. On Wednesday, Amnesty International said an investigation it conducted into the March 3rd Russian airstrike that reportedly killed 47 civilians in the city of Chernihiv concluded events may con- constitute a war crime. The global rights group said interviews and video analysis indicate unguided aerial bombs, known as dumb bombs, were used to mostly target civilians standing in line for food. Meanwhile, Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba and his Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov made no progress during talks in Turkey on Thursday to find a diplomatic solution to the conflict in Ukraine. It's the first such high-level meeting since Moscow launched the invasion against its neighbor two weeks ago. You're listening to VOA News. A Pentagon investigation has concluded that a series of security lapses led to a deadly assault on a military base in Kenya that killed three Americans in 2020. The inquiry was led by the United States Africa Command. It found what the head of the command described as shortcomings and the sharing of intelligence. In a statement, General Stephen Townsend, who heads U.S. Africa Command, said there was a false sense of security at the base. An inadequate focus on potential threats and force protection at multiple levels. For a number of successive years, there was complacent leadership and command and control at the tactical level and poor oversight at the operational level. The brazen assault by 30 to 40 Shabab fighters at Manda Bay, a base near the Somali border, resulted in the largest number of U.S. military-related fatalities in Africa since October 2017. That's when four soldiers were killed in an ambush in Niger. At a virtual hearing in bankruptcy court, addiction and overdose survivors and those who've lost loved ones unleashed their emotions on members of the family that they blame for fueling the opioid epidemic. APZ Donahue reports. It's part of a plan to settle thousands of lawsuits against the maker of OxyContin, Purdue Pharma. Former company president Richard Sackler appeared by audio. He had said the company and family bear no responsibility for the opioid crisis. One woman played a recording from when she called 911 to get help for her overdosing son. She called one of the Sacklers the scum of the earth. Several showed pictures of loved ones who died because of their addictions. Many spoke about forgiveness, with some trying to find it. Ryan Hamilton, who was in recovery, said, You poisoned our lives and had the audacity to blame us for dying. I'm Ed Donahue. The trial of four men accused of conspiring to kidnap Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer in 2020 is underway in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Prosecutors and defense attorneys on Thursday presented statements. The trial opened earlier this week. The U.S. Justice Department charged Michigan residents Adam Fox, Barry Croft Jr., Daniel Harris, and Brandon Caserta with conspiring to kidnap the Democratic governor in October 2020. Fox, Croft, and Harris face additional charges of conspiring to use weapons of mass destruction, including explosive devices. This, according to court documents, all four of those on trial have entered not guilty pleas. Prosecutors maintain that the men, upset about COVID-19 lockdowns and other restrictions, recruited right-wing militia members for the plot, which included driving to the governor's vacation home in northern Michigan to abduct her. Via remote, I'm Marissa Melton, VOA News.